Bruce Lee was an incredible athlete with a ripped body that was capable of awe-inspiring feats of speed, power, and strength. Bruce was only able to get his body to this point because he understood that just like a high-performance car, his body needed the right kind of fuel if he wanted it to run with maximum efficiency. Over the years, Bruce Lee experimented with all different kinds of diet plans and supplementation protocols. And this quest for the perfect fuel source took him down some pretty strange culinary roads. But while some of what he ate looked a little strange, there's a reason he looked so ripped and performed at such a high level. So if you want to build a lean, athletic, and powerful body like Bruce Lee, then listen up. Because in this video, I'm going to do away with all the myth and legend that surrounds Bruce, and I'm going to break down his diet from a scientific perspective so I can tell you what you should copy and what you should leave in the history books. Bruce Lee's diet was predominantly based around Chinese food, and he didn't care much for Western or European cuisines. This is because Bruce Lee thought of food as fuel. He even went as far as to say this, when you are a martial artist, you only eat what you require, and you don't get carried away with foods that don't benefit you as a martial artist. Bruce believed that Chinese food was a superior fuel source for his body because of the focus on meat and vegetables in Chinese cooking. With this type of diet, he would get an ample amount of protein and carbohydrates versus eating a more traditional Western diet that included excessive amounts of protein and fats. And this was a really smart move. Anytime Bruce threw a kick, went for a run, or performed any other intense bout of exercise, his body was burning something called glycogen to power this movement. Glycogen is simply the stored form of glucose that can be found in ample amounts in your skeletal muscles and in your liver. While your glycogen levels are high, you'll be able to perform at a very high level. But over the course of a tough workout, your glycogen stores will become depleted. And as you do, your performance will suffer. After your glycogen stores have been depleted, they'll need to be restored before you can perform at your best again. And you can easily do this by eating carbohydrates either during or after your workout. Because Bruce Lee was always going for runs, sparring, and lifting weights, he constantly needed to replenish his glycogen stores. This is why a very high carbohydrate diet was perfect for him. This also ties in to why Bruce ate so frequently. He would commonly eat three to five meals plus snacks each day. He did this so his body would have a steady stream of fuel coming in at all times. But Bruce didn't just reach for any carbohydrate he could get his hands on. He didn't eat cake, biscuits, or baked goods, really anything that was made with refined flour, because he believed these foods were just empty calories that did nothing for the body. While I understand what he's saying, that these foods have a low micronutrient density, they're not going to give you very many nutrients. They still have macronutrients like fat, protein, and carbohydrates. So they still will give your body fuel, but these type of foods just don't pack a lot of essential micronutrients for the amount of calories that they bring. More on that later. So what would these three to five meals plus snacks that Bruce would have on a typical day look like? Well, Bruce might start the day by eating a bowl of muesli or mixed cereal, which consisted of whole grains along with nuts and dried fruit. Then he would drink a couple of his special protein smoothies throughout the day. These protein drinks were a huge part of his diet. We'll be breaking them down in detail later in the video because they're, uh, they're a little weird. Then he'd go out for a modest Chinese lunch before having dinner prepared by his wife, Linda, later on. Typically, Bruce's family would have rice, vegetables, and some kind of protein source for dinner. But sometimes Bruce would treat himself and have his wife cook up some pasta, which would be served on a bed of leafy green salad. He would also give himself a quick boost of energy during the day by having some nutrient-dense, freshly squeezed juice whenever he felt he needed it. These juices were a mix of fresh veggies and fruit. But the reality of Bruce's diet was that it was always changing. And this is because he put a huge priority on eating a wide variety of foods. And this was for a really good reason. By eating a wide variety of foods, you'll be giving your body a wide spectrum of essential micronutrients, also known as vitamins and minerals. This is absolutely essential for one's physical performance and overall health. And unfortunately, tons of people around the world are micronutrient deficient. Some of the micronutrients that people are most commonly deficient in are vitamin A and B12, iron, zinc, and magnesium. But that's by no means an exhaustive list. And having these deficiencies can cause you some real problems. If you have an iron deficiency, for instance, also known as being anemic, you might experience extreme fatigue, weakness, and strong headaches, among a long list of other symptoms. And there's also research showing that a zinc deficiency in men can lead to low levels of testosterone. Yikes. Now, obviously, Bruce couldn't perform at his best if he didn't have sufficient levels of these essential micronutrients. And that's why for a certain period of time, Bruce would eat liver once a week. Plus, more commonly, he would have his wife add other organ meats such as kidney, heart, and even brain to one of his favorite midday snacks, rice soup. 
While the thought of eating heart and brain might be a little off-putting to some, these type of organ meats are actually packed full of the exact type of nutrients your body needs to perform at its best. In fact, remember that list of the most common micronutrient deficiencies? Well, it just so happens that organ meats are an amazing source of all those micronutrients that most people are failing to get into their diets. And it gets even better because organ meats are a really low cost way to get more high quality protein into your diet. Just look at the price of liver versus something like chicken breast. Speaking of protein, we need to talk about one of the biggest long time staples of Bruce's diet, his protein smoothies. Hardly a day would pass where he wouldn't consume at least one or two of these high protein drinks. But they weren't just any normal whey protein shakes. These protein smoothies were a combination of many whole foods and natural supplements. And they were all specially designed to give Bruce all the nutrients and energy he needed to fuel his intense workout regime. The exact contents of Bruce's smoothies would vary, but here's a list of what they typically contained. Okay, so this thing has everything. Full eggs with the shell on, peanut butter, fruit, brewer's yeast, and wheat germ. While this sounds insanely gross, this protein shake would be absolutely packed with vitamins and minerals. Tons of fiber, magnesium, iron, and zinc from the wheat germ. Those eggshells, while disgusting, are almost 100% calcium. Lots of B vitamins from the brewer's yeast, and the supplement inositol even has anti-anxiety and anti-depression effects because of how it helps regulate your neurotransmitters. But Bruce's dietary supplementation didn't end with his thick protein drinks. He also took a laundry list of other supplements. Now breaking down each and every one of these supplements would be a whole series of videos onto itself. So I won't be doing that here, but I will be talking about what I believe to be the most beneficial supplement Bruce Lee would regularly take. And I'll do that right after I talk about my partners over at SuperX. SuperX creates the world's most functional, comfortable, and stylish superhero themed workout apparel. They've got sick designs based off all your favorite heroes and villains. And all their super suits are made with super stretch fabric, meaning you can work out completely uninhibited while looking like a badass. They're always coming out with awesome new designs. But if you see something you like, you need to act fast because they often sell out quick. Now go check them out with the link in the description of this video. Then once you've found something you like, use code DEMERS at checkout for 20% off. Now back to the video. So what was, in my opinion, the best supplement taken by Bruce Lee? Well, it was the adaptogen known as ginseng, Panax ginseng, or as it's also known, Asian ginseng, which is most likely the type Bruce was taking, is an adaptogenic herbal root that has been used by humans as a cure-all for over 5,000 years. And it seems our ancient ancestors were right to put ginseng on such a pedestal. As in more recent times, Panax ginseng has been thoroughly studied, and with each of these studies, we discover more and more reasons to be taking the adaptogen. Ginseng has shown promise for its ability to improve cognition, increase focus, improve sexual function in men, aid in maintaining a low body fat percentage, for its ability to improve stress tolerance, and much more. These benefits certainly need to be researched more thoroughly in the future, as we only really have theories on, on ginseng's mechanisms of action. But it's clear that Penix ginseng is something very special. Bruce Lee would take these small vials of ginseng mixed with honey throughout the day whenever he felt he needed a boost of energy while filming a movie or while training. This elixir of his was kind of like an ancient Chinese version of 5-hour energy. Because when taken in large enough doses, Panax ginseng can be quite stimulative. So between that and the fact that the honey is almost entirely sugar, this would have been a great way for Bruce to keep his energy levels up throughout the day. But this isn't the only thing Bruce would drink to keep his energy levels high. Bruce was a huge tea drinker, and he would commonly drink Lipton black tea that had been allowed to steep for a long time, making it very strong. Then he would add one tablespoon spoon of honey for each tea bag used. Bruce really liked his carbohydrates. While Bruce frequently drank black tea, he enjoyed all kinds of Chinese teas. And his habit of tea drinking actually could have been a big reason why Bruce was in such amazing shape. Black tea, and also most Chinese teas, contain a good amount of caffeine. Typically anywhere from 30 to 55 milligrams of caffeine per 8 ounce cup. And for reference, an 8 ounce cup of coffee contains about 100 milligrams of caffeine. And caffeine is actually one of the most effective and well-researched physical and mental performance boosters out there. It's been shown time and time again that the use of caffeine can improve cognition, increase athletic performance, and even help with fat loss. While caffeine's actual mechanisms of action are somewhat complicated, the reason it has such a positive effect on athletic performance and body composition is pretty simple. Caffeine stimulates your nervous system, and because of this stimulation, you'll be able to train harder, longer, and while in a more focused state than if you weren't using the caffeine, leading to more high quality workouts. And over time, these higher quality workouts will stack up, leading to better results. So for Bruce Lee, the boost from all this strong black tea might have let him get in another 50 kicks per workout or let him run another few laps per week. And over time, this little bit of extra workout volume and skill training can really add up. So I would say Bruce Lee's diet and supplementation regime 
while being ahead of its time, in my opinion, is a little over the top. You don't need to be drinking protein smoothies with half the grocery store in it, juicing everything juiceable in sight, or taking every supplement known to man in order to perform at your best. But what lessons should we take from Bruce Lee's diet? The first big one is that if athletic performance and muscle growth is your goal, you should be eating a high carbohydrate, high protein diet. You still wanna get in a sufficient amount of healthy fats, but protein and carbohydrates should be your priority. The second is that you should avoid empty calories and instead focus on eating a wide array of highly nutrient dense foods to make sure your body is getting in all the essential micronutrients it needs to perform at its best. The third is that you should definitely be taking supplements, but I highly recommend that you get your blood tested by a reputable doctor in order to know what supplements you actually need to be taking. Because just taking handfuls of random supplements because some jacked guy on the internet told you to can end up doing a lot more harm than good. And finally, you can up your game in the gym and in life through the smart use of natural stimulants and adaptogens like caffeine and Panax ginseng. Now, obviously, Bruce Lee's diet was only half the equation. If you want to know how Bruce was able to perform at such a high level, then you need to check out my video all about his special weight training techniques. I'll see you there.